Good afternoon, my name is Ajay Anand. I am the CEO of a Norwegian company called Norwegian Media. We're based in Oslo on the other side of the pond. Uh, what we're doing in New York is bringing all our CTV or connected TV solutions to you here to basically show you how broadcast or the conventional TV as you've known it shouldn't be on, on just the small devices when you stream but also on the large TVs. The new TVs are becoming internet connected and those are your connected TV devices. Quick introductions to who I am and who this company is. We've been around for about 20 years, working only with TV streaming solutions. Um, we do everything that's related to video and UI and UX. That, that would mean streaming TV on mobile, to browsers, to large screens. We work with the user experience, how you click and you play and you pause and you watch TV on any device. We are Scandinavian. Everything that's design, everything that's utility, everything that is practical in terms of watching TV, that's what we do. What the company does, apart from the fact that we do a lot of cloud hosting solutions for TV and video content, we do a lot of downlinking of content, we prep it for streaming, we work for any broadcaster and operator who has TV apps, and we do a lot of consulting. This is where our expertise in TV and video engineering comes into play, and my presentation to you about today is all about connected TV and its solutions. Of course, when I present, I of course need to look at what news has come in in the last one week. Netflix has announced the fact that they are going to add ad tiers to their consumers. Now, every time there is, there is a certain devil in detail, and that's what a company like ourselves do. We look for the technology issues that come about in, in announcements like this. Of course, what they've done is absolutely fantastic. It gives a, a chance to users to actually watch content for cheaper because they watch ads up to four or five minutes every hour. They basically get an idea as to how you can watch content for about $6.99 here in America when you're paying up to $10 today for their basic tiers. And of course, you can still continue to watch Netflix without any adverts. You have to pay about 30% more. But then again, when you, inver when you insert ads to any streaming service, how how does it impact the user and how does it impact technology? And that's where we're here to see, especially when all of these TVs are becoming bigger. So Netflix started a lot of their services on browsers, on, on a website, Netflix.com, as well as on mobile. As you see the years progress, you see it on a lot of TV devices. You can see it on Samsung, LG, Apple TV, and as well as Android TVs. But what happens is when they launch a new technical element into the entirety of it, which is advertising, you can't, you lose out on a few things. With advertising, you can't download on those tiers anymore. This is not just because of the content licensing. I'm not a content licensor, so I don't talk about that aspect of it. We're a technology company from Norway. So what we, what we tell you is basically, how does introducing advertising allow you to lose a feature that you're used to? We all want to download our favorite events and our favorite shows on Netflix and watch it on mobile, but you can't do that if you have to have an ad tier model. And that is because of a technology issue. It's gonna take a few months for them to solve, and I'll tell you why, and I'll tell you all the complexities of connected TVs. But first, let's try to understand a few more things. Why is that important? Of course, with every news that they announce, it's going to impact a lot more things. When they add new, new features, they're gonna deprecate the older TVs, they're gonna deprecate the older mobiles that you possibly should not be using. But as and when we see a lot of things, including inflation, we don't want to be spending $1,500 on a mobile phone. We don't want to be spending $2,000 on a new TV every three years. A TV's lifespan has been about 10 years. It dropped to about five pre-pandemic, but now we need to save some money, so it's going to increase again. So which means that TVs are going to last longer in living rooms. But what happens when they say things like, a TV 10 years ago is not going to work for Netflix anymore. This is going to be impactful for people who are going to buy the best TV streaming service and not be able to stream on these devices. So deprecating of TV streaming services on certain devices have huge impacts to companies like Netflix. Look at Twitter when they release any little news that they do. Their consumers are really, really angry. The idea of this is because when you buy a TV in 2015, it's already eight years old. So in about two years time, you're going to lose all of your streaming services, even the best TV streaming service, that's going to impact not only the cost that you've spent on that particular device, but you can assume that not just Netflix, but there's a whole lot of other streaming services that's going to stop their streaming services on these devices that you spent a lot of money on. Now, before we get into why these things happen, let's understand what these devices are. Um, connected TVs 
are essentially a lot of things. Um, it's synonymous with smart TVs, which we'll get to in the end. But then again, they're first of all connected to the internet. They have a little wire or they work on Wi-Fi. You have Apple TV, you have Android TV, the boxes. You work on any connected device. As long as they have internet, that's a connected TV. As simple as that. You have game consoles, you have the play, it's PlayStations. Every, every, every so often you get new ones. And the set-top boxes, the boxes that you work with Comcast and Verizon and any, any operator or carrier have these boxes that they have for you. The smart TVs are the biggest part of what connected TVs are. From Samsung to LG, you've heard that apparently TiVo has just launched on Vestel devices. You're seeing a lot of new um, uh, Roku devices come into play. Roku as a device is changing. They're only sending their software and they're, they're allowing hardware manufacturers to just use their software on those devices itself. You're seeing that Samsung has now said that they won't be using just their Samsung TVs to, to use their Samsung ties and OS in the future. They're going to be allowing other hardware manufacturers pretty much from anywhere in the world use Samsung as a part of their ecosystem to use that up to be a part of a TV that you may buy in the future. What does this mean? So you're going to buy a combination of an OS which is used to a certain hardware and a new hardware that's coming about. Of course, Android is a king of such things when you can buy an Android TV, which would mean that you could buy a Philips, a Sony or any Toshiba in, in Latin America, but they're all Android TV. I've just about spoken to Motorola who's, who's thinking about launching their own TV again. They've apparently had the last TV launch in 1970s and now they're coming back in 50 years later on which is fantastic but they're coming back with Android. What this means is that Motorola will be connected to the Android ecosystem which means that they would have the biggest app store in the world connected to their devices that anybody who buys a Motorola TV can have access to apps such as Netflix. Now that we know what TVs and connected TVs are we want to see what the problems are as far, as far as the technologies are concerned. The difference between a mobile and a TV and a browser is how a user interfaces with them, which means that a, mo a TV has a remote. So you need to click on clunky remotes and get make, make sure that you, you, know, you have to log in by typing your name, username and password for every application that you log into. That's only the first part of the problem. So the idea of having uh, a connected TV solutions and understanding its technology is a device fragmentation. I just spoke about how many hardwares and how many softwares that there are. The platform SDKs are a, not a dime a dozen. Every time that you look around, you're going to find a new, new device, a new OS, a new version of the OS, which launches every year, ever so often. You're talking about playback issues. You know, you do understand that when you talk about streaming, there's HLS from Apple, there's Dash from Google, there's Microsoft in its own way. You're talking about these three companies leading the way with any streaming technology, and every time that you need, you press the play button, depending on the network, depending on the device, de depending on who you're streaming from, you're getting a different sort of stream. And that is techno technologically very different for every streaming service and costs a lot of money to maintain for these services. So you need to make a streaming protocol that essentially works on any device. Navigation on these devices, whether it be a remote control as simple as Apple TV, as complicated as I don't want to say, but you want to figure out who has the most complicated remote control and figure out how to navigate these services. It's not as easy as pressing left and right because if you want to move from a content piece which is on the top left and go all the way to the top right, you need to click about 10 times. And that is navigation on smart TVs. How simple can you make this? How easy is it to find technology that helps you build applications is what we're talking about and the UI UX of course Android and Apple sets different rules this makes device fragmentation bigger and clunkier as we go go forward with technology when you talk about smart TVs there's animation which means that if you have a TV from 2022 and onwards things are quicker there's a lot of cool things that you can see move around in terms of an animation on top of the screens when you buy anything from 2017 and before there's no animation but then again you need to fix an app or use an application which actually works on these devices so we're talking about using new TVs as, as, as young as four years old which was bought in the beginning of the pandemic as old as five would become too old already to use cool and animated services. The idea of how do you work these play technologies, by play technologies I mean any technology that makes streaming happen, it is a means to the end. Nobody cares about how you get a stream to play, you need to care about how well and how useful it is to make sure that an application works and however old the device is because when TVs are bought they need to last longer. So here we're talking about the TV apps and how what they are and what is the kind of technologies that are used to do this. 
you need to develop applications. Uh, when we talk about multi-screens and the same application needs to work on your Apple phone, tablets, and TVs, the same on Android, a whole lot of smart TVs that I just spoke about. And how do you get this to work with a common technology? There's HTML, which is a web technology. We use React, which is from Facebook, which is quite deeply penetrated in any technology field with user experience to get your apps across pretty much any device that has a web interface. And the device ecosystem has a few things that you should consider, whether it's a mobile or a tablet or a TV. On one side, there's a whole lot of operating systems, which essentially allows web and video streaming. But on the other side, to get any of this information of streaming technology or streaming services onto a device, you need to integrate a player. You need to make sure that there's playback, first of all, the video that you're playing on these devices, which needs to be there and change depending on any device that you're talking about. You have analytics. If anybody's having any streaming service on a, on a device, they're trying to make money out of it because you as a subscriber are paying or an advertiser is paying for it. So for this to work, you need to make sure that you can count certain things as to how, how many users there are, how many, how good the quality of this streaming service is and things like this, which needs to be happening only with the integrations from the likes of Google to any other very quality associated analytical company that there is. And the content itself. The content needs to come from a back-end video office, which you can see a lot of companies here present what they're doing. Essentially, when you work with companies like this, there's a whole lot of technology that you need to integrate towards, and they're all different. To make sure that they all present themselves in the same way, because devices are the, are the same at the end of the day, to make sure that they all work in this device ecosystem on one side to integrate them, but on the other is the consumer. What does a consu consumer care about? They only care about what they see, what they can touch, and what they can feel. When you talk about the consumer, they want to be able to know that, that these devices actually work, that they actually function in a way that they're paying for something. So when I said React is a framework, is from fa Facebook, we think they're cool because Facebook is an app at the end of the day, but it's a web app. So it works with a web technology and it works across many devices. Anything that needs to, to work in technology needs to be modular, which means that if one part doesn't work sometime, it needs to be changed without changing the entirety of the application. And of course, the device in itself remains the same, but then again, devices change ever so often every year. So when you talk about all of these technologies and all of these devices, the framework needs to work. How does one function in terms of building applications on smart TVs alone, not even talking about mobile and, and tablets and browsers? When you have these design technologies as a part of the ecosystem as a technology provider, we think about integrating them once and making sure that we can just play them over and over again across many different services. So when we talk about the, the framework itself that builds these applications, we make sure whether it is an SWOT service or, a, or an AWOT service, it needs to be the same because technology at the end of the day is just a means to the end and you make sure that these things don't alter what the consumer is watching because at the end of the day, you don't care about anything that, that, that is built behind scenes, you watch what is on the screen. There's a lot of information that we want to share to you. We've got an open source, if you're technical, you have all of our uh, open source code online. You can follow the company. We're called Norwegian Media. We're from Norway. We've got a blog. It's everything technical about streaming and TV. And of course, if you want to visit Norway, we host our own TV conference every October. Uh, it happened last week. Sorry about that. We'll see you in 2023 in, in Norway. And it's called Northern Waves. And as we say in Norway, Tusen Tak, a thousand thank yous. We're in that direction. We have a little booth. It's called Norwegian Media 1 800. As you see the sign, you can look around and find, find me and my colleagues there um, all of today and tomorrow. Thank you.